And the Center for American Progress, a huge think tank on the left, is pushing expanded government employment programs. It could be a great tool for training and employing a much needed skilled labor force in the United States, but some fear it could create a large and ineffective government bureaucracy, handing out jobs that aren't adding value. Meanwhile, others argue that universal basic income is the remedy to the current state of an ineffective welfare system. Well, my guest, Pavlina Cherniva, economics professor and program director at Bard College, points out the flaws in this and then lays out a plan. Check it out. The job guarantee proposal is not a new proposal, so I'm very encouraged that they have embraced the language and some of the rationale, but it seems like what they're proposing is a bit more modest than what the actual job guarantee is. The job guarantee essentially is a permanent standby policy that offers direct employment to the unemployed in good times and in bad. Okay. So even at the peak of the economic cycle, we have about two people per every job opening. So we need an employment program that will capture those unemployed people as well. They are targeting about 4.4 million jobs, and that seems rather small. Yeah, uh, to say the very least, and, and right now unemployment, according to statistics, isn't the worst we've had, but it's still not great, and that's, that's much more than, uh, than we need out there now. CAP wants to train and start apprenticeships, fine but they don't guarantee private sector jobs. You estimate we need about 20 million full-time jobs in today's world. Do I have that number right? What, what do you think about that? Yes, um, some of my colleagues at the Levy Economics Institute have done a recent study that does the full count. Um, we're looking anywhere between 12 to 20 million full-time jobs, a shortage of 20, 12 to 20 million. So we need to account for people who have left the labor force right after the crisis, people who are working part-time but need full-time work, um, other people who are invisible to us. There is pent-up demand for jobs even among caregivers simply because there aren't well-paying jobs. And so if we were to look at really the demand for jobs, we're looking at much bigger numbers. Well, tell me about these public jobs. Wouldn't it require an increase in government projects, funding, bureaucracy? If we know anything right now, uh, the right the political right is taking over elections in this country. We just saw four special elections. Democrats are zero for four. Uh, obviously, the presidential election was, was one thing. How do you think the American people would ever think that increasing government projects to offer employment would work? Because that sounds like what it would require to keep people publicly employed, not just trained. All right, I think that if anything, this last election told us that people want jobs. I mean, that That's is true. at the heart of their economic anxiety. There are other issues, without a doubt, but with respect to our policy agenda going forward, people need work. And so um, given what we are already doing and how little we have, how meager the expansion has been, how, right. um, how few jobs we've been able to create, I, people, I think, are uh, hungry for a lot more aggressive approach. So. Are these going to be government jobs? They can be federally funded, but they can be locally administered. They can be administered by nonprofit, social entrepreneurial ventures. There are many ways in which we can do this. What's important to keep in mind is that this is a policy that complements private sector employment. The government already spends in counter-cyclical ways. In other words, when the economy is bad, the government already provides a considerable amount of stimulus. But if we were to do it through a job guarantee, we will simply be providing jobs to people who have been laid off. That provides the stimulus to the economy. We essentially eliminate jobless recoveries. And as the economy recovers, then people transition into private sector employment. So in a sense, we're not changing the function of government. We already do counter cyclical spending, except we don't know how much we need to spend because right. we don't directly employ people. But doesn't this sound a bit like, I mean, you're going to have to agree, uh, increase public funding for jobs. Are these jobs worthless? Do we need them? Is there a demand for these jobs? Or are you just creating jobs where 
you know, so that someone can pack a lunch and go to work every day and come home with a paycheck, which we all know is very important. People need pride in work, and a lot of people unemployed want that. But can we just go about willy-nilly creating jobs to guarantee a job? And if not, then isn't the word job guarantee a bit misleading? It's a guarantee in the sense that if somebody needs work, we will provide a project that will employ them at a above, above poverty, I've argued for living wage. So in that sense, it's basically a promise. That's what it means to be a guarantee. But, a but, job, then a job guarantee, what kind of jobs would those be? Yeah, what well, project are we talking about? Are we talking about building needed infrastructure? Or are we talking about administrator or someone working in the, you know, the state highway program, like in my state, and they pay people $50,000 a year to do PR and make new pamphlets. I mean, I know people that do that, and it's not necessarily something that's really needed, but we do need road workers. So I guess what I'm asking is, these projects that people are being trained for, what, what, what's an idea of some of those types of projects? So there are lots of um, socially useful activities that just go unfulfilled. I mean, if you just look at the care gaps, whether it's elder care, whether it's child care, whether it's community care, I mean, we have a lot of public squalor. These jobs are for the public purpose. These are socially useful jobs. Um, there are many, many things that we can think of, whether they're small environmental jobs, uh, like renewal, cleanup, uh, whether they are small infrastructure jobs, whether they are, again, care, uh, care work. There isn't a shortage of things that we need to get done. But what we also know is that unemployment imposes enormous costs on society. And we are already paying for unemployment. We estimate that we are foregoing, we're giving up about half a billion to $10 billion of output per day because we tolerate high unemployment. Now, this is already paid for. We, there are also enormous costs that are associated with unemployment, whether this, these are health costs, whether this is crime, whether it's incarceration, whether it is the urban blight and the poverty that we have to address, this is paid for. What I'm suggesting is that if we were to do a direct employment program that provides people with decent work at right. decent pay, you doing useful public projects, that will reduce significantly the enormous costs that we already bear. Right, and a lot of people, as you say, you can fold that into uh, to trades and you know, engineering, refrigeration, even all of these things that that uh, so many people, even with high school educations. Can vocational training, that's what I'm trying to say, valuable vocational training that so many people can't really get a hold on if the government maybe, as you said, funded those things, it would add so much to the projects we need. Now, I want to talk also about uh, what CAP is targeting as an unemployment rate of, or I'm sorry, employment rate of 79% of the prime age working group. That's nice. Do you think that's even possible? I think it is possible. I, I wouldn't necessarily think that this is the appropriate target. I think the target is to provide work to those who need it. What about the population that is not prime uh, working age? Um, if we were to look at the national unemployment rate, most economists believe that we are already at full employment. But if you actually look at county level unemployment, you will find that there are pockets around the country, some surprising areas in fact, uh, that are not Michigan or Ohio, that suffer from persistent ongoing depression levels of unemployment. And this is ongoing, even in good times. So if I were to do it, I will simply provide a open-ended job offer, and I will target the program to these distressed communities. Some of these distressed communities may have elderly workers that still need work. Some might have young workers um, that have very high unemployment rates. So the way that I would go about this is simply providing, in a targeted way, a job opportunity to anyone who wants it then people can voluntarily select into the program, and only then can we know really what is the appropriate employment to population ratio that we will end up with. I think the most, the thing that would actually sell this is if you, the American people understood what these jobs were, how much they were needed, and they weren't just trying to find someone something to do for a paycheck. I want to talk real quick about universal basic income. It's sold as a fix to social welfare. You say this concept is essentially a Trojan horse. Can you explain that to me? 
Well, it is a giant voucher program. The universal basic income promises some paycheck to anyone, whether they work or not, whether they're rich or poor, whether the economy is doing well or not, on ongoing basis. So it is popular with the right because it is seen as a replacement to existing welfare programs. It is popular with the corporate sector because if that represents, if that actually leads to replacing some programs that might lead to privatization of some public functions. So we have this model where the corporate sector doesn't have any incentive or impetus to provide decent pay because this represents a subsidy. Why should a company provide, let's say, health benefits if somebody has a basic income voucher that can, you know, buy health care on the market? Why should we provide um, high pay or high wages if there is that other additional income that one could supposedly use to provide for themselves. So it is a subsidy. Now compare this to the job guarantee. The job guarantee provides a decent work and decent pay. If the private sector uh, wants to hire a person in an expansion from this program, they will have to match that wage benefit right. package. And so that becomes an effective minimum wage for the economy. And this could be very interesting uh, if we hear more uh, as this possibly develops, maybe not, of what these jobs would be uh, to fill in these communities and, and even in the urban urban blight areas that there's there's the jobs have fled and the opportunities have fled. What could be created there? Thank you so much for coming on and, and talking to me about this. We're going to bring you on to talk about this more very soon. Pavlina Cherniva, Associate Professor of Economics and Department Chair at Bard College. Thank you.